Hello, I'm Dave Kovanac. Uh, 1965, I was an engineering student at Nevada Southern University. After I finished mechanical drawing, I designed a turbojet engine and then I actually built it. That's what we're going to go over here. You can see here's some 45 year old plans that should be in plastic, but <laughs> they still work. And I named the engine the Rebel after our team. I was on the track team there. Anyway, this engine's unique because I was uh, doing a philosophy that you can take things and make them into other things. In other words, you take form and you turn it into another function. To date, I have $85 in today's dollars in this engine. Uh, if anybody knows about turbojet engines, they ain't cheap. This one was water-cooled. For instance, we're going to start at the beginning. This came off of a flower vase, and this is the velocity stack that makes the air condense down into the compressor. Speaking of that, this is off of a butler, or off of a Hoover vacuum cleaner. This is the compressor. This was off of a Kirby vacuum cleaner. If any of you bought a Kirby, you know all the stuff you got. That was the handy butler, had all accessories. The bearings are made out of copper plumbing fittings that are uh, uh, alloy of bronze or of copper. And this is the shaft. This was the most expensive part. Uh, the fuel nozzle is made out of uh, copper with five slits cut in it with little pinholes and it burns acetylene gas. This is illegal now. This was asbestos tape. Thank God I held on to it because you can't bite anymore. And this was a tuna fish can, family size, for the combustion chamber. Still funnel. The, the holes are for the air to go in for combustion to uh, complete itself. Uh, this device here goes over the inside of the combustion chamber to protect it from the heat. There's where the water comes in. This was a stainless steel apple slicer that I added 33 more blades to. This was the apple slicer itself. I cut the ears off and you can see the blades. This is the turbine that runs the whole engine. Uh, this is an alternative one that was made recently out of stainless steel. This was pulled off somebody's old oven I found out on the side of the street. This is the mica high temp that's going to go back on the cone, which this was a stainless steel flour sifter. Ladies, go like this. Okay, this is off of an old flathead Ford V8. This is the exhaust cone. It goes right behind the turbine to guide the gases back into the afterburner. I bought this for 50 cents. I don't know what it was. I don't know nobody else does either. But it happens to just fit into my theory. And that's the flame holder back here after the gases go through and ignite. I estimate this will put out about 8 pounds of thrust. To start it up, you energize 10 pounds of pressure in it, turn on acetylene gas, put a Model T coil on, fill to make sure you got a little moisture coming out because it's water cooled, and then hit the ignition button, and then you have to watch to make sure flames don't come shooting out through here. You have to keep it back because otherwise they call that a hot start and that'll ruin these quick, even on a real jet engine. And anyway, uh, that's it, my project. <laughs>